Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise him and we glorify him. As he ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all the blessed prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam respected imam brothers and sisters here at Masjid al-Husna in Puchung in Kuala Lumpur assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh let me first apologize for not being able to speak in Bahasa Malayu. But Allah says in the Quran that amongst his signs are the languages that you speak. So all languages are ayatullah. And one of the advantages of speaking in the English language is that when this lecture is put on the internet it can reach people all over the world inshallah our topic is entitled an Islamic response to Dajjal's modern Western feminist revolution In the first part of the lecture, we have to introduce you to the subject of the job and then take you to his attack on women and then describe the results of that attack. And in the process of doing so, we must constantly give our response, Islamic response. However, before we introduce you to Dajjal, let me first translate this ayah of Surah Al-Nahl of the Quran, Surah number 16, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we sent down the book, yani the Quran, sent it down on thee, O Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, tibiyanan li kulli shay, that this book might explain all things. Wahuda, and in this book, there is guidance Rahma and that explanation and guidance have come as Rahma an act of kindness from Allah and for those who submit to the book and follow it and search in the book for that which explains our topic today Bushra lahum, good news and glad tidings for them. For they will understand what others cannot, and they will succeed when others will not. And so we ask this question. It is posed not only to those of you here in Puchum, but we are opposing this question to the distinguished and respected scholars of Islam, our brothers, who we respect, the ulama, and in particular the ulama of the Arab world, men of such fame and distinction as Dr. Yusuf al-Qaradawi. 
Here is the question. The strangest event ever to have occurred in the religious history of mankind is the return of the Jews to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own 2,000 years after Allah had expelled them from the Holy Land and broke them up into bits and scattered them all over the world وَقَطْعَنَاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُمَمْ and placed a ban on them that they could never return Tabuli could never return وَحَرَامٌ عَلَى قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ could never return until until when I'm not going to translate that we ask the question what is it in the Quran which explains this phenomenon this unique event in history tell us what is the explanation since Allah says that this Quran explains all things can someone kindly bring for me a copy of Jerusalem in the Quran from the back we wrote a book 10 years ago entitled Jerusalem in the Quran don't tell me you've not seen it because it is on my website it has been translated to Arabic it has been translated to French to Spanish to Bahasa we even have the Bahasa book here tonight it has been translated to Urdu to Bengali to Bosnian several languages and large numbers of people have read that book let us raise it so the camera can get it so they can see all over the world we gave an explanation what is yours among the strangest of things which have occurred in the religious history of mankind is the restoration of a state of Israel in the Holy Land 2,000 years after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had destroyed Israel we ask what is it in the Quran which explains this event since Allah says that the Quran explains all things we ask you tonight from Puchung what is that explanation among the strangest things that is occurring in the world today is that that state of Israel is about to replace the United States of America as the ruling state in the world the only ones who are not conscious of that are those who eat the eat the roti chanai and drink the tea tarik and go home and sleep the rest of us are conscious of the fact that the Zionist movement which created Israel the Zionist movement controls Barack Hussein Obama controls the American Congress controls governments around the world including governments in the Muslim world controls armed forces you think the Pakistan armed force is free armed forces are free <laughs> we ask what is it in the Quran 
And in he who was sent to teach the Quran, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. What is it that explains this amazing phenomenon of that Israel about to rule the world? Since Allah says that this Quran explains all things, we ask you today. We've been asking for 10 years now. And time is up for you. We demand an explanation from the world of Islamic scholarship tonight. We have an explanation. And this is our explanation. That Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam told us about the job. And he told us that he is known as Al Masih al Dajjal. And you know that. Meaning that he will impersonate Al Masih. He is not Al Masih. Al Masih or the Messiah is the son of Maryam alayhi salam Nabi Isa alayhi salam and when they boasted of how they killed him waqawlihim inna qatalna al-masiha Isa ibn Maryam Rasulullah what sarcasm in their language when they boasted of how they killed him, they never knew. And no one knew for 600 years. It was a secret. Until Allah sent down this Quran to explain all things. That no, they did not succeed in killing him. No, they did not succeed in crucifying him. Walakin shubbiha lahum. Allah made it appear like that. Bal rafa'allahu ilayhi. Allah raised him unto himself. And among the signs of the akhiru zaban, wa innahu la ilmu lissa'a, wa innahu la alamu lissa'a. Both are correct. That he, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, will come back. And his return is the sign of all signs of Akhiru zaman the last stage. And Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said that when he comes back, he will come back as Hakim, the one who rules. What kind of a rule? Not a rule in which he has to submit to the Security Council of the United Nations. Huh? No, not at all. When Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns, he is going to rule over the Security Council of the United Nations. His rule will be the supreme rule in the world. And he will rule the world from Jerusalem. But they didn't know that. They thought he was dead. And they know that Allah had made a promise to them. That he would send a prophet who would be known as Al-Masih, the Messiah. And that he would rule the world from Jerusalem. Like Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam. From the throne of Nabi Dawood alayhi salam and therefore from Holy Israel. And so they knew that when the Messiah comes, 
the golden age will come back and they said we will rule the world one more time and all the Jews are waiting for that <laughs> but Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam told us and the ulama of Islam know this that Allah had created a being and programmed that being to impersonate the Messiah and that is why he is known as Al-Masih Dajjal and his method of operation is deception that's why he is known as Dajjal he has a PhD in deception Now then, let us now use some reason and some logic. That's all I ask. If Dajjal is to rule the world from Jerusalem, because that's what he has to do to impersonate the Messiah, then, among other things, this is what he has to do. Number one, he has to liberate the Holy Land for the Jews because it is under Muslim rule. I say to you, he's already done that. I say to you, this is the explanation of what happened in November 1917 when a British army defeated the Ottoman Islamic army and took control of Jerusalem and the Holy Land. Number two, he will have to bring the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. And I say to you, he's already done that. This is my explanation. That between 1917 and 1948, the Jews returned to the Holy Land and eventually reclaimed it as their own. Number three, he will have to restore a state of Israel in the Holy Land. It will not be Holy Israel, it would be an imposter. And get the Jews to believe that this is Holy Israel. He's already done that. I say to you, this is my explanation of the restoration of the state of Israel in the Holy Land. 2,000 years after Allah had destroyed it. And 2,000 years after Allah had expelled the Jews from the Holy Land and banned their return. Number four. He will have to cause that state of Israel to become the ruling state in the world. And I say to you that he's about to complete that mission. The Arab uprisings, from my analysis, while I applaud those who rise up against oppression and there is oppression everywhere in the world today every town and every city if you pay an Indonesian maid who sleeps last at night and wakes first in the morning who is a young woman probably unmarried who has no male around her to protect her and who works like a dog and at the end of the month she's paid the wage of a dog because no Singaporean woman would work for three hundred dollars a month then you are an oppressor it matters not whether she's a maid in Singapore 
serving those whose mouths are reeking with hatred for Islam or whether she's a maid in Saudi Arabia swimming in oil and yet oppressing her it is oppression there is oppression everywhere in the world today if you employ as a contractor in the construction industry a Bangladeshi or a South Indian or an Indonesian and you pay him the wage of a dog let me tell you what Allah will do with you because governments may tolerate oppression but Allah has zero tolerance for oppression zero tolerance for oppression and this religion of Islam has come to the world to eliminate oppression to stand up against oppression so let me tell you what Allah says in the Quran and it's around the corner وَإِن مِّن قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْتُورًا Every town and every city will be destroyed. Not one will escape. And those that escape destruction will be punished with terrible punishment. That state of Israel is today the greatest oppressor of all in the world. We ask you and it is our right to ask you for you are scholars of Islam you are the ulama what is the explanation in the Quran for these phenomena we say this is our explanation that this is the work of the Dajjal and he is close to the end of his mission Children at school should live to see a man who rules over Israel tomorrow. Because Israel is going to wage big wars and take over from the United States. And when Israel wages those big wars and takes over from the United States and the US dollar collapses and the US economy collapses and you know there's no more gold in Fort Knox. Where did the gold go? Oh, why don't you ask Israel? Hmm? Then a man will stand up in Jerusalem to declare, I am the Messiah. That man is Dajjal. But before the, the big wars can be waged, Israel does not want to wage big wars and appear as an aggressor. No. Israel wants to wage her big wars and make it appear to the world we're only defending ourselves. And so the Arab uprisings take place and we commend them for standing up against oppression but why was the Egyptian armed forces so suspiciously docile hmm? and now when elections take place in Egypt we can predict that the Islamic movement is going to win with a landslide majority because that's what they want why would Israel be smiling when an Islamic government comes to Egypt and then the domino effect takes place in Tunisia and in Yemen and Syria and Jordan? Why? Why? The answer is because the Islamic governments in the Arab world 
will have to support besiege Gaza. Break the siege of Gaza. Support the Palestinian Arabs. And then Israel will cry out. And CNN will cry out. And Al Jazeera, which is CNN's sister, will cry out. Terrorism! <laughs> Islam is rising! Islam poses a threat to Israel. And Islam is a menace to the world. Hmm? And so it should not be long again before these events occur. And Israel takes over the world. But we, our people, cannot wait on you, the scholars of Islam, the ulama. We can't wait on you anymore. You must give us the explanation from the Quran so that our people will not remain in a state of confusion and be taken for a ride by pseudo scholars who sing for their supper. Of course, the supper is paid with US dollars. What is that explanation? We have given the explanation in this book. The Prophet said Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam that the last people to come out to Dajjal will be women. Are you going to be angry with him for that? Our sisters in the world of Islam who have taken up the cause of the feminist movement are you going to be angry with the Prophet for that? Do you have more knowledge than he has? Is he a male chauvinist now? <laughs> he said that the last people to come out to Dajjal will be women. And a man would have to return to his home and his family and tie down his wife and sister and daughter to protect them from the Dajjal, to coercively restrain them, to protect them from the Dajjal. Are you going to be angry with Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam? Then kindly part company from us. Because what this hadith indicates is that women who fall under the influence of the Dajjal, not all will do that, no, alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we have sisters in Islam who cannot be seduced by Dajjal, who will not give up the hijab, not for anything. What this hadith indicates is that women who come under the influence of Dajjal are going to be brainwashed. I don't know whether you have a term in Bahasa for that. You do? Brainwashed. <laughs> Meaning, you could talk as much as you want. You will not be able to convince them. It's an exercise in futility. Because they are brainwashed. Talking to them and warning them is like throwing water on the back of a duck. It'll just flow off. Hmm? Brainwashed. They will lose the capacity for rational thinking. And become like robots in the hands of the child. And this is why you have to coercively restrain them, tie them down to protect your sister, your daughter, your wife who is now trapped by the job. We say that this is the explanation, this hadith, this is the explanation of a modern western feminist revolution which is taking the world by storm for the last hundred years and more. We say that Dajjal is the mastermind of the modern Western 
feminist revolution. You may differ with us because you are brainwashed. So your differences with us makes no difference to us because you are incapable of rational understanding when Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam has spoken in the way that he has spoken. Don't be angry with me tonight. I have a job to do. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam went on to describe for us the implications and the consequences of that modern Western feminist revolution. Listen to what he had to say. And this is Kalamul Ambiya. They say in one sentence, the prophets of Allah, in one sentence, that which will take us hours to explain. The angel came to him, Jibra'il alayhi salam. Just before he died, the angel came in human form into the masjid and asked the five questions. I don't have to repeat them, Puchung, because you know them. And question number five was, what are the alamat sa'a? What are the signs of the last day? And among the answers that he gave was this. That a slave woman would give birth to her mistress. A slave woman will give birth to a baby girl, not a baby boy, baby girl. And the baby girl will become someone who will rule over her. If she gives birth to a baby boy, no, the baby boy will not rule over her. But if she gives birth to a baby girl, the baby girl will rule over her. Hmm? From this hadith, we know that there is slavery in Akhiru Zaman. And it is a worse slavery than they experience in Medina. Because the, in Medina, Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam responded to that slavery in the Arab economy by saying these words. He said, give your slave to eat what you yourself eat and give your slave the clothes to wear that you yourself wear so this slave is not subhuman not an animal <laughs> this slave is a human being whose humanity is recognized and respected And so when you dismantle slavery, like freeing a slave, if you commit a particular sin, you have to free a slave. When the slave is freed, then the slave can be absorbed into the society as an equal member of the society. And one generation later you will not know who was slave and who was not. Huh? This is slavery as we knew. The United States of America waged a civil war a hundred years ago or more to dismantle slavery. And the descendants of the slaves are today still in permanent poverty while the slave masters are still permanently rich. Not in Islam. This slavery which is going to come in Akhiru Zaman is worse than that, that slavery. What is going to cause the slavery in Akhiru Zaman? So that now we'll have this woman who is a slave. The answer is again Dajjal. 
He said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that in the age of Dajjal the world will witness kathratul riba the universal prevalence of riba riba is something so bad so bad so bad that when the Kaaba was washed away in a flood and the idol worshipping Arabs had to reconstruct the Kaaba we were told in the Sirah that they laid down the law we will not take any money from any banker oh, not banker no riba money no riba money will be accepted today <laughs> the money lender is the banker <laughs> when time comes to get the donation for the masjid brother just write the check <laughs> that was then and they worship idols and this is now and we say we worship Allah riba is so terrible that the very last revelation of the Quran to come down was on riba the very last one and in that revelation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared war فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ war from Allah war from his messenger and therefore we you and I have an obligation to wage war to eliminate riba riba is so bad that Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam cursed all four and he said that they are all equally guilty the one who takes riba the one who gives riba the one who records the transaction and the two witnesses and yet we go to the bank and we borrow money on interest to build a house to buy a house shame on us and we go to the bank to borrow money and interest to buy a car ah, yeah, wait a minute some people make hajj now with a bank loan on interest shame on this ummah shame on this ummah the curse of the prophet is upon you does that not affect you the prophet said and of course you know riba is borrowing and lending money on interest but there's another form of riba as well here it is got it right here you must have seen this sometime in your life a piece of paper and you print a picture on it and the scholars of Islam must have the freedom to preach Islam if we don't have the freedom to preach Islam then we must make hijrah to a place where we have the freedom to preach you take a piece of paper and you print a picture and you put a number on it and then you give to this piece of paper an entirely fictitious value what is fictitious in Bahasa? Huh? Huh? Mohim Rohin Dongin whatever it is you give to this piece of paper an entirely fictitious value you have created wealth out of nothing huh did you hear that but only Allah does that only Allah does that so now you are committing shirk and when we accept it and we use it we are also now a part of the shirk perhaps now we might understand the hadith that yeah just now we just finished this that 
999 out of every thousand will enter into the hellfire. This paper is part of the cause for Indonesia being in slavery today and Bangladesh being in slavery today and Pakistan being in slavery today and Egypt being in slavery today. This functions as an instrument of riba. The Prophet said Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam whether riba is big or small the result is still the same poverty and destitution permanent poverty and permanent destitution the rich permanently rich and growing richer the poor permanently poor and going down into slavery but we have this subject for two nights from now, Tuesday night. Uh, someone will make an announcement where that lecture will take place on the prohibition of riba in the Quran and Sunnah. So we don't need to explain riba anymore tonight. But because of riba, she is a slave woman. And now we want to understand why did he say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that a slave woman will give birth to her mistress. For this we have to go again to the hadith in which Nabi Muhammad Alaihi Salatu Wasallam prophesied about Akhiru Zaman that women would dress like men. That's an amazing thing. Huh? That women would actually dress like men one day? Would we ever live to see a woman in a jacket? Would we ever live to see a woman in blue jeans? Would we ever live to see a woman with a tie? Huh? Wake up. <laughs> it's already here. It's already here. Women are already dressing like men and when they do dress like men, either they don't know of what the Prophet said or they don't care. They don't care. No. Why? Because they're brainwashed. They're following the jal, and the only way you can stop them from following the jal is getting a piece of rope and tying them up. Why would the jal take women and get them to dress like men? Why? The answer is that the jal wants to challenge. What religion and society has constantly proclaimed for thousands of years that men and women are functionally different. The Jal wants to say that all the prophets of Allah were wrong and all the religions were wrong and men, those brutes were wrong. And we, modern Western civilization, have come to liberate women by saying to them, there is no functional difference between men and women. And so anything that a man does, a woman must have the freedom to do it. It sounds real nice when you are brainwashed and so now she puts on the working woman's clothes and she goes to work and faces the morning traffic like everybody else don't be angry with me don't be angry with me I have a job to do and she works all day like men do and she comes home in the evening with her briefcase, like men do. 
and she has now assumed the functional role of man in society. But sister, I have a question to ask. Do you mind if I ask the question? Who's going to take care of the children? You hope, I hope you don't mind my asking the question. Who is going to take care of the children? Because you know, if you don't have any children, your husband go want another wife. Oh yeah. So who is going to take care of the children? Don't be annoyed with me. Oh come on. What kind of an answer is this? Put the children in a daycare center? But we never heard about a daycare center until Uncle Sam came along with it. You know, modern Western civilization. A daycare center? Did your mother do that? Did your grandmother do that? Huh? Now, uh, listen, sister. Do you mind if I talk to your baby? So I went to the baby. Baby is only six weeks old, eh? So I asked the baby, and Allah caused the baby to speak. Miracle, huh? Baby, can you hear me? Yes, Uncle Imran. What do you want? Baby, do you prefer the daycare center or do you prefer mama? Baby says, I want mama. I want mama. I don't want this place. Doesn't your baby have any rights? Does your baby not have any rights? Do you dispose of her rights so casually so that you can pursue your career? Or put her with the next door neighbor? Or put her with a babysitter? Or put her with granny? Or put her anywhere? I have to go to work. I told you, brainwashed brainwash okay Allah says in the Quran you know sister he says Jazat was sayyia sayyia to misluha so here is an Islamic response to Dajjal's modern western feminist revolution you know sister that baby is going to grow up one day and baby is going to be a man and a woman and you're going to be an old woman you're going to have a walking stick. And guess what baby is going to do with you? Baby is going to take mama and put her in a home for old people. So I went to visit her in this home for the old people. And it looked to me like a junkyard of human beings. You know what's a junkyard? You know the old cars? You can't use them anymore, put them in a junkyard. So I went to her and she's sitting on a rocking chair. And I said to her, Mama, Mama, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, my son Imran. What do you want? Mama, do you prefer to be here in this home for old people or you prefer to be with your daughter and your grandchildren on your life? Please take me home, I want to go back home. I don't like this place. Jaza was sayyia, sayyia to mithluha. So when you put your baby in the daycare center, don't cry when she puts you in the junkyard for human beings. We don't do that in Islam, sister. We don't have this feminist revolution. Our mothers take care of their children. Our mothers are not part-time mothers. Our mothers are full-time mothers. And if a mother in Islam has something to do as an emergency, then all the other women in the village come together to take care of her baby while she's away. We don't have any daycare centers. So now, because of Dajjal's modern feminist revolution, she's dressing like a man and going out to work. But um, when you go to work, 
if you want to advance your career you can't behave like a woman no 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 tabule when you go to work and you're in the office and you're an officer you got to behave like a man your voice must become masculine huh so you have authority in your voice there was a woman in mr clinton's cabinet you couldn't tell by hearing her voice hmm so you lose your feminine voice you have to behave like a man when musa alayhi salam sister when he was there in sinai in my body and by the well do you remember and the two women were there the two girls with their sheep and you remember he watered the sheep for them you of course you remember don't you and then they were able to go home but when he, when musa alayhi salam sat down underneath the tree and he prayed to allah if you have any good for me please give me i need it i need it i need it oh lord and then from the distance one of the girl came one of the girls came back to meet him and she's alone and he's alone nobody else is there do you remember how allah described how she was coming huh she was coming back in a state of bashfulness in a state of shyness hmm? but when the jazz women go out dress like men to work like men they lose their femininity they lose their femininity they become increasingly masculine the quran describes the creation of the male and the female as synonymous to the creation of the night and the day where did it do that hmm where in surah al-layl wa layli idha yaghsha wa nahari idha tajalla and by the night and that which it shrouds so mysteriously so filled with splendor and by the ne- the day and its bright light penetrating light nothing covered nothing concealed wa ma khalaqa az-zakara wal untha that in the same way that allah created the night and the day so too did allah create the male and the female so allah wants the night to remain night sister and allah wants the day to remain day sister and when the night is night and when the day is day look what happens there is intense attraction between the two and do you notice that when the day is approaching the night what happens it still happens in islam it's gone now in france and in singapore and in the united states and britain when the day is approaching the night there is so much excitement that the sky is painted in a riot of colors the sunset the sunset is there as a sign of the excitement of the day as he approaches the arms of the night and when the day touches the night the day plunges into the night when last did you look at the sun setting beneath the sea that excitement has to be preserved and it can only be preserved when the day remains day and the night remains night but the jazz says no 
my night must become day. And so she loses her femininity. And so the attraction of the day for the night begins to wane, to become weaker and weaker. Until eventually the day is no longer so attracted to the night. Oh my, that's going to be a problem now, eh, sister? Are you listening? Then Allah's messenger said something more. He said that men are going to dress like women. Now don't be angry with me, please, I beg you. Well, you can be angry during the lecture, but after the lecture over, we must be friends and drink some teetari. He said that men are going to dress like women. One more time, don't be angry with me. If a man has to dress like a woman, the first thing he has to do is to shave off his beard. I told you, don't be angry with me. If a man has to dress like a woman, the first thing he has to do is to shave off his beard. Do you know why Allah put the beard on the face of the male? It doesn't matter whether it's plenty here or a little bit of hair. Still, there's enough hair. Two reasons. The first is to be able to distinguish the male from the female. Huh? What's the second reason? So children can play with it. You didn't know that, eh? You are violating the rights of your baby to play with your beard, eh? <laughs> so what's going to happen when men start dressing like women? And the attraction of the day for the night is becoming weaker and weaker. The Dajjal is going to rub his hands and say, mission accomplished. Because now the day will get married to the day and you have a marriage certificate and the night will get married to the night and you'll have a marriage certificate sister that is where modern western feminist revolution is taking mankind and we don't want to go that way we who follow Muhammad want to go in a different direction where the attraction for the male and the attraction for the female must remain powerful. Powerful. So she's lost her femininity. But that's not all. She's also losing her fertility. She can't have babies. When you're trying to play being a man, Something happens to your body. Allah wants that the woman should have her babies when she is young. When the body is young. And the body is youngest of all and best equipped of all to make babies after she has reached the age of puberty. That is the best time. You got to have peanuts in your head. To tell me that the woman is better equipped to have a baby at 25 than at 15. I don't have peanuts in my head, excuse me. And all through history, women had their babies when they were 14 and 15 and 16 until the Jal took over. And now they're having their babies at 25 and 26 and 27. But then some of them can't have babies. Because the womb refuses to deliver a baby. And this is a problem because if I don't have a baby for him, he will take another woman. What to do? So you go to a place called a clinic, fertility clinic. And they're very expensive. We're talking about a slave woman giving birth to her mistress. Eh? And you pay a large sum of money to become pregnant and all that you try but nothing works nothing works 
But remember, you're earning a big income. You've got a career. You've got a BMW in the yard there. You're a modern woman. But you can't have a baby. I feel sorry for you, sister. I'm not laughing at you. So now guess what you do? You go to Indonesia. Knock, knock, knock. Are you there? So the slave woman comes out. <laughs> and you make a contract with her. If you do it in New York with an American woman, then you take her to the clinic and your husband's sperm is injected into her egg. Hmm? So she can become pregnant with your husband's baby. It gonna cost you 70,000 US. You don't have that kind of money. So you travel to Jakarta or to Bangladesh and you get the slave woman, knock, knock, knock and you make a contract with her and you only pay 7,000. So she goes to the clinic and the sperm is injected into the egg and she becomes pregnant. Masha'Allah! She got a first class baby there inside of her. She's a slave woman, but for nine months she got to drink mineral water. That baby should not get this polluted water. Eh? And for nine months, no GM food, eh? only the food that's served in five star restaurants. Got a first class baby there. And then the baby is born, <laughs> and the mother is paid. And the baby goes first class while the mother remains a slave. But this does not explain all of it. It is only when a baby girl is born that the baby girl will rule over the mother. If a baby boy is born, the baby boy will not rule over the mother. So this explanation is not adequate. The Prophet said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam one more hadith and again connected with Dajjal he said the time will come when one man would have to maintain how many women how many how many 50 five, zero. what is 15 Bahasa Mimbu Nimru Lima Biro <laughs> one man would have to maintain 50 women. Now listen. Don't go back home and misquote this hadith to your wife. Eh? <laughs> he didn't say one man would have to marry 50 women. So when you go back home and report this hadith to your wife, make sure you report it properly. One man would have to maintain 50 women. What this hadith indicates is that there is going to be a calamitous decline in the birth of baby boys. So great will be the decline that hardly any baby boys are going to be born tomorrow. Why? We held an international Islamic retreat in Trinidad a year and a half ago. And then we held a second one in Cape Town in March. And now we're holding the third one here in Malaysia, inshallah, next year. And the retreat was meant to teach the reality of the world today using the Quran and Hadith. And in that, hadith, in that retreat, a medical doctor stood up and explained to us he said that the, the sperm of the male has male chromosomes and female chromosomes. And when the male chromosome fertilizes the egg, then a baby boy is born. But if a male chromosome 
fails to fertilize the egg, then the default would be a baby girl. Aristotle said the same thing 4,000 years ago, but he said it in a clumsy way. He said in his Nicomachean Ethics that when nature fails to produce a boy, a girl is born. <laughs> the doctor explained that the radiation that comes from cellular phones and from laptop computers and notice where the laptop computer is placed hmm? that this radiation damages sperm production making the chromosome weaker and weaker until eventually the male chromosome will be too weak to fertilize the egg. Hmm? Ten years ago when I came to KL, nobody had a cell phone. Nobody. And now every Indonesian male has a cell phone. Huh? It is proliferating. Maybe that the genetically modified food also has a role to play. Maybe that the pollution of the environment, the atmosphere has a role to play. But the fact is that there is a tomorrow which is coming when very few baby boys are going to be born. If you have a political system in which one man and one woman has one vote then the majority will rule Allah did not create women to rule no he did not but Dajjal says I'm going to make them rule so Dajjal has given you the cellular phone it's very handy oh yes but this is the price you pay and tomorrow when there are very few men and large numbers of women guess who's going to be your prime minister and all the ministers in your government this is not to say that women do not have the intellectual acumen to be scholars and to be administrators this is not to be in any way insulting or demeaning women no, your mother was a woman and your mother was the best teacher you ever had in your life. How can you speak of women as being inferior to men intellectually? Are you crazy? No. How can you speak of women being morally and spiritually inferior to men? Are you mad? Did the messenger of Allah not say that all of mankind will stand before Allah on judgment day, men as well as women, as equal in his sight as are the teeth of a comb? Did he not say that? But Allah did not create women to rule. No. Allah gave them complementary roles. The night has to do the work of the night and the day has to do the work of the day and so they complement each other they're like two halves that come together to make a whole but Dajjal says no Dajjal says I'm going to put an equal sign between the male and the female and he did it and they swallowed it the brainwashed followers of Dajjal and so now it is only when a baby girl is born that she rules and if a baby boy is born he does not rule what I've done and taken quite some time to do it is to explain today's modern Western feminist revolution 
using the Quran and using the hadith of Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Now let us go to the last part and we will end. He said that woman, now don't be annoyed with me, woman would be dressed and yet be naked. I wonder when that will come. Huh? How many more thousand years we have to wait? Woman will be dressed and yet be naked. Hmm? So they said to her sister, why don't you go to the beach and take a bath? You can't go to the beach and take a bath with that long jilbab and that hijab. Take it off. So let me give you a bathing suit that only the legs will be exposed. Eh? So she took it off. Put on the bathing suit. And then he said, no, 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 no. That's not so convenient now. Take off that. Let me give you something called a bikini. Huh? So, uh, we have to follow. We're brainwashed. <laughs> Took it off, put on the bikini. Hmm? Well, what is the end of this? Allah created women beautiful. Every man would agree with that statement. Allah created women beautiful. The most beautiful thing in the whole world for a man is a woman. And when women uncover their beauty like that, the natural consequence, you should not be surprised, the natural consequence is that you're going to end up having sexual relations the way animals have it out there in the open. Huh? The natural result is that you're going to end up having sexual relations the way animals have it out there in the open. Huh? Will this happen? Well then sister, allow me to quote one more hadith and I promise you I'll end. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said that the time will come when people will have sexual intercourse in public like donkeys. Like donkeys. That is where the modern Western feminist revolution is taking mankind. And when they have sexual relations in public like donkeys, the babies are going to be born as auladu zina, bastards. And he said that the majority of children who will be born will be bastards. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our eyes so that we can see what they cannot see. The direction in which Dajjal is taking the world of women. And that we would act as firmly as we possibly can, as firmly as we possibly can to protect our women from being seduced and destroyed by the job. If your daughter does not want to conform with what has come from Allah and his messenger, then get rid of your daughter. If your wife does not want to conform with what has come from Allah and his messenger, then get rid of your wife. Because if you don't, they will take you into the hellfire. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين. In سورة النساء give her a warning. If the warning does not resolve the problem, then put her to sleep separately. If that also does not resolve the problem, then if you think it can work, then Allah gives you permission. To strike her, but not, not with a big piece of wood that will break open her skull. <laughs> no, 
It's not an act of brutality. Don't be stupid and come at that with us. The Quran is not advocating brutality. Huh? Stupid people say that. Let me repeat it one more time. Stupid people say that. The Quran is actually advocating an act of mercy. He said use something like a toothbrush. Huh? It is a psychological blow intended to wake her. But if she's not a kind of woman who could respond to that, you might be in danger. If you take the toothbrush and strike her, she might take her shoe and hit you in your face. <laughs> there are women in the world like that. Stay away from them. Stay away from them. Okay? And look for a pious woman who conforms in her life and her behavior with what has come from Allah and his messenger. And there are many like that in the world. Get rid of this one. Divorce her. Any more questions? This is my opinion. And no one should accept my opinion unless and until you are convinced that I am correct. You should show respect for your own intellect. <laughs> my teacher trained me like that. So this is my opinion. Dajjal controls the modern world. He controls the governments. <laughs> he controls the political system. He, he controls the economy. He controls the system of money in the world today. Hmm? His attack is most ferocious in cities. And so he causes the people of the countryside to abandon the countryside and come to the cities. And so today for the first time in the history we have mega cities. 10 million people, 20 million people. Huh? And you have all of these high-rise apartment buildings going up huh? all over the place so that the countryside can come to the city where the Dajjal can attack them. My opinion is you must move in the opposite direction. The Jal said to Tamam, Tamim Dari in the Hadith in Sahih Muslim. He said, when I am released, I will enter every town and every city. But he didn't mention Kampung. Kampung means, for the, for the listening audience abroad, Kampung means village. So you must move in the opposite direction. I got an email from, I think, Dubai this morning. He says, Sheikh, I'm moving out of Dubai and I'm going to buy a farm in the remote countryside in Oman. And I'm getting out of this from Dubai. So you move out of the cities and you move to the countryside. And you produce your own food. And you must get out of range of the cell phones. You know they have the, what do you call them? The antennas. And these beam, beam the radiation. All right? So you have to try to get out of range of that. There's something called fiber optics. And with fiber optics, you could have internet, but you have no radiation. No. If you build a village in the remote countryside, out of range of the cellular phones, and you produce your own food, which is not GM food, every young woman in the world wants to have a baby boy. Go ask them. Go and ask them. But they cannot get a husband tomorrow who can give them a baby boy except in this remotely located Muslim village. Yeah. Any more questions? No more. So, we, yes. Two more. And that's it, okay? Two more, and that's it. Yeah, at the Muslim Scholars Conference, did they discuss uh, globally, global 
What do you think we did tonight? It is because we are not getting a response from the scholars of Islam. This book was written 10 years ago and no response. We want them to tell us what does the Quran say that explains the world today. So now we are moving into a different phase. Now we are publicly asking them to respond. And this is going to be on YouTube tomorrow. And we even calling the names of our respected and learned scholars of Islam, not to in any way disrespect them. Professor Dr. Yusuf Karadawi has written very good books, a learned man. I mentioned his name today. I hope that it reaches him to provoke him and the association of Muslim scholars that he leads. Come on, we've waited long enough. We are demanding an answer now. Yeah. Last question. <laughs> the opinion about? 12th of July? 2012. That the world will end on 2012? <laughs> Is that why you're eating some Madhuriya now? <laughs> Whenever Dajjal is beating his drum on something, as he's beating his drum on 2012, you must know something is planned. Okay? Since the world is now expecting something big, 2012. So let us not disappoint them. Hmm? What is it likely to be? I can think of a number of things. I can think, for example, of a nuclear explosion in an American city. Hmm? I can think about Israel launching her war to destroy Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons and simultaneously attacking Iran to destroy Iran's nuclear plants. I can think about such an attack leading to regime change in Iran. So that the present government, which I consider to be sincere in its opposition to Israel and in its support for the Palestinian cause, that this government is replaced with a government like Afghanistan, Karzai government. And when that happens, then it will fulfill another hadith about Dajjal. The Prophet said that Dajjal will be followed by 70,000 Jews from Isfahan wearing their Persian shawls. Hmm? Uh, I can think 2012 is the attack on Pakistan will not only destroy its nuclear plants and nuclear weapons, but that they'll have to break up Pakistan to ensure that Pakistan can never rise again and rebuild their nuclear capacity. So one part of Pakistan going to India, Kashmir, one part of Pakistan going to Afghanistan for the greater Afghanistan, Pakhtunistan going to Afghanistan, and the province of Baluchistan becoming an independent state. If that happens, then China is finished. <coughs> China can never again be a superpower. Once Baluchistan becomes an independent state, why? Because there's a Chinese built port on the Balochistan coast facing the Gulf of Oman at a place called Guada. The Chinese intend and the Pakistanis have now agreed 
that Guada will become a naval port, not just a port, a naval port. If it becomes a naval port built by the Chinese, maintained by the Chinese, then Chinese nuclear-powered submarines and Chinese nuclear-powered ships can now have a fighting chance to patrol that area and to protect Chinese oil import. Because without oil, China is gone. <laughs> but if the attack on Pakistan takes place, and Baluchistan becomes an independent state, then the first fruit of that NATO attack would be a U.S. naval, naval base in Guada. Hmm? If the United States gets a naval base in Guada, China is finished. Hmm? The other things that can happen, not only that if they take over Libya so that they're able to establish their military presence in Libya. So when Israel attacks Egypt in 2012, the attack will come from both sides of Egypt. Egypt will be cornered. But finally, that by 2012, maybe before that, but by 2012, they're able to get rid of the regime in Syria. And the Arabs who are now fighting, like they did in the First World War, <laughs> and they were deceived <laughs> fighting in the first world war in the British army yeah, for, for freedom and then ended up with what they ended up with those Arabs who are now fighting with American support against the Syrian regime in what I call a Yankee Jihad will eventually succeed and when they succeed and they take over Syria the implication will be that Russia would lose its naval port on the Syrian coast. That naval port in the Syrian coast is the only access that Russia has for a military presence in the Mediterranean Sea. That's the only one in Syria. And so the uprising in Syria is eventually meant to eventually cut Russia's throat. And that one, Pakistan, eventually to cut the Chinese throat. But that's enough for now. This is the last question. I thank you very much for coming out tonight. And uh, when the lecture is over in Salah...